for both entertaining and informative. Check out Mental Health Versus Mondays at 6 p.m. on 91.3 FM WBNY. They are our love bugs and companions. They are our pets, our family, and they make life better. When we face unexpected challenges, so do our pets. That's why we're on a mission to support people and their pets. Whether donating a bag of kibble, sharing an Instagram post of a lost cat, or welcoming a foster pet into your home, every bit of kindness counts. Visit petsandpeopletogether.org to learn how to be a helper in your community. Brought to you by Maddie's Fund, the Humane Society of the United States, and the Ad Council. 91.3 91.3 FM WBNY is proud to present Democracy Now! with Amy Goodman. Welcome to Democracy Now! Award-winning investigative journalism. Is the NRA imploding? Providing relevant analysis that makes you think. Secret State Department and documents, including evidence of U.S. war crimes. Fact-finding reports you will not hear elsewhere. Democracy Now! airs Monday through Friday, 8 a.m. on 91.3 FM WBNY Buffalo. Go living for the people. This is L. Nathan Hare. Welcome to our broadcast, focused on providing insight into events shaping our national and region, regional world, and the facts behind those events and policies that are shaping our world for today and for tomorrow. Join us weekly on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays from 9 a.m. to 10 a.m. Following Amy Goodman's Democracy Now! program. And of course, you know our program is live, so you can call in, you can join our discussion. We really hope that you will. Our number here again is 716-878. 5104. That's 716 878 5104. We're also here with our in studio audience of one, Norm McCarter. <laughs> Welcome, Norm. Good morning, Mr. Hare. All right. Norm represents you. So you if, if you all don't like what he's saying, <laughs> join in. <laughs> right. And then we have our citizen of the 21st century. He actually has a, 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 a green card. It allows him to walk around in the 21st century like he knows what he's doing. Uh, (laughs) Willie H., who does the live streaming of the program. Welcome, Willie. Welcome, everybody, to Living for the People with L. Nathan here. Call us up, y'all, 716-878-5104. That's 716-878-5104. And, of course, I'm sure that all of you know that this is the beginning of Women's History Month. And so we uh, we won't spend every show this month talking about women's history per se, But we'll find ways to make everything that we talk about this month connect uh, to the whole spirit of what the women's movement, you know, has been about. I I, I need for us to understand as we talk about this that the women's movement and the feminist movement are not the same movements. Mm. They're related movements, but they're not the same movements. Can you explain that to us? Let's see if I can make this make sense. Women should have the right to vote. That right. should not be a problem, right? right? That should just be a statutory right to vote. Of course, we waited until 1919 to let women be able to vote. You know, we just waited, what was it, 170 years? It took a little while for us to go along with women being able to vote, but that that's a right, statutory right. Women should be able to, to contract with somebody so that they could buy land. They could uh, set up corporate agreements. You know, they, they could set up trust, you know, and so on, on their own. They shouldn't have to go to anybody to ask any permission for that. They should be able to do that entirely on their own. Those are rights, women's same rights that any man has, a woman uh, uh, should have. But the feminism movement goes a bit beyond. It goes to the idea uh, that that Norm has in his head about what a woman is supposed to be in his life. Uh-oh. <laughs> Uh-oh. Notice how I blame this on Norm, so I don't, I don't have to take any responsibility Mr. for it. Mr. Hare, don't do it, Mr. Hare. <laughs> But, you know, raising the kids, washing the dishes, washing the clothes, organizing the house, you know, all those things that we call the the, the nest making stuff. You know, we assign that to women as if women are supposed to be the accountable, responsible persons for that. That doesn't make any more sense than denying women the right to vote. But that has made sense to half of the population of this country, men Mm -hmm. in this country, for hundreds of years have accepted this idea that that's what women's role is. So even if women got to vote and sign contracts and sit on juries, they still had to be home, you know, taking care of the kids and washing dishes and, you know, painting the bathroom, you know, that that sort of stuff, right? Mm-hmm. And so that's what the, the, the distinction between 
the women's movement and the feminist movement is. So as we talk about some of the people that make up the iconic folks that uh, uh, were, were um, how shall I say, who, who were significant in the advancement of women's rights uh, in this country, we'll try to dig at some of these other, uh, you know, uh, tangential issues. Um, in fact, let me just take you to something. I, I, I came across this article. Uh, people, oops. My machine argues with me when I don't give it the right, the, the right numbers. Okay. We have to start over again. <clears throat> Okay, now stop fussing with me. Okay. So this is an article that, that, that was in the, uh, I actually found it in, in the uh, uh, Britannica uh, um, magazine, and it was entitled Women's Rights Movement. And what it talks about is that uh, the women's rights movement is also called the women's liberation movement. They're considered to be the same thing. Uh, it involves diverse social movement, largely based in the United States, but in the 1960s and 1970s, it sought equal rights and opportunities and greater personal freedom uh, for women. It concluded or it coincided with uh, and, and, is, and is recognized as part of the second wave of feminism. So the first wave of feminism was what I talked about initially, the right to vote the right to engage in a contract, the right to own property, the right to sit on a jury, you know, the basic stuff that citizenship is made, is made from. The second phase of this movement was uh, uh, the idea of women having a, 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 an agency of their own to be able to decide for themselves how they want to apply themselves to the world so that those that want to be housewives and stay at home, that's what they did. But those that wanted to be architects and physicists and plumbers, they should be able to do that as well. Uh, and so while the first wave of feminism uh, of the 19th and early 20th century focused on women's legal rights, especially the right to vote, the second wave uh, of feminism uh, of the women's rights movement touched on every area of women's experience, including politics, work, the family, and sexuality. The sexuality issue I want to touch on a bit as we go along, okay? Because there are some things that, that because I'm me, I never bothered to study. I know you didn't know that, Norm. I know you thought I studied everything. <laughs> I, I thought, at least yeah, I yes. thought you read everything. <laughs> but this, I thought you read Quite well-versed, sir. Quite well-versed. This, this is confession day. <laughs> there are some things that I don't study because they don't interest me. I don't mean any harm. They just didn't interest me. So these issues that people started to get into, it wasn't just changing you know, people's understanding of what their roles were as men versus their roles a a as women, which I understood. And having been raised by a mother and having two sisters, eight, my sisters having agency to be able to create their own path for themselves, that, that was on my plate. You know, I had to make sure that that happened. I couldn't let any, anything get in their way. But that was a different issue than the issue of sexuality. Sexuality got you into another arena. Now you're talking about people that don't necessarily call themselves men, who don't necessarily call themselves women, that identify themselves in a different way. Yeah. And I just want you to understand now. I mean, I'll do the best I can with the subject, but I want you to understand that it's only been in the last two or three years that I even considered the idea that somebody called themselves something other than a man and a woman. And even then, it didn't really change it with the way I thought about it. <laughs> I, 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 just, I just took it as, well, if that's how you all roll, that's how you roll. If it's legal for you to do it, then I'm not getting in your way. Well, I've, I, I, I've learned that there are actually people that's born with certain things that men and women, or if you classify a man, classify a woman, there's people that born... Both with both four. But how many people are in that situation? I don't know. I don't know. It's, it, I don't know. it's quite a, a, it's quite a few. Out of 331 million people in the country, would are there six? You know, eleven? I mean, how many people are in that situation? I don't know, I, Mr. Hill. I, I don't I see I see I can't make a movement out of something that only affects one out of every 
150,000 people. That's not a movement to me. That's a, that's a, a, a essentially an incident. And it's something I have to deal with, but I have to deal with it as an incident. What do I need to do to help you get through that situation? But do I need to transform the entire society because you were born with uh, uh, sex, sexual, I'm going to say it right, the sexual apparatus of both a man and a woman? Right. Uh, well, let me let me let me jump in, <laughs> Mister. I Mr. need you all in the audience to jump in and help me here because I'm, <laughs> I'm telling you now I'm not, I'm not on my street. I just wanna, I'm not on my street. <laughs> okay. I just want to say and add <laughs> that um, I believe this issue has been there over the last. I mean, it's been there forever, but uh, yeah, I think it's so become too. more prevalent yeah. over the last. I'd say, oh man, fifteen to twenty years, mm -hmm. and and in the last five years. Five to seven to eight is really kind of expounded and kind of came out the box, you know, um, with the, with the um, uh, the addition of uh, gay marriage uh, added, you know, I, I think it's changed so many different things. And with that, I'll let you take it from there. Mr. See, see, now I'm glad you stuck that in there, then tried to leave it alone and, le and, le and <laughs> leave it leave it with me and whatnot, right? Because in in in, in my mind. You know, because that's that's where I'm in prison, right? I'm in prison in, in in my mind. In my mind, I don't understand this gender issue as being the same issue as uh, feminism or women's rights. I don't see them as the same thing. I, I'm not saying I don't feel that people who have alternate sexual identity don't have a struggle in front of them, a fight that, that needs to be fought for them. I'm not saying that. I think they do have the there's a struggle that they have to fight for. Yes, sir. I just think that that's a different fight than the fight for women's equality. Oh, oh. So what you're saying, Mister Hare, is that um, is that that particular movement is now they're saying the same as feminine. Feminism? Or, well, or? not only the same. They talk about it in the same vein. Oh, okay. So when they talk about feminism, they include this issue issue of sexuality, which, when I first heard the term, I thought sexuality was sort of being more open about expressing your sexuality. You know, like kissing outside. You know, <laughs> mm -hmm. you know. Um, Wearing short dresses, you know, th things like that. You know, that I mean, understand now, you all are from the 21st century. I'm from the 20th century. So, in, in, in my world, short dresses were an anomaly. <laughs> we, didn't, we didn't grow up with that. And uh, so, so, so it, 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 it took a while for me to wrap my mind around those things. But when we talk about, so, so talking about sexuality was like being expressive, you know, uh, being, doing things to, uh, encourage sexual expression, you know, uh, uh, from people. But that's a different issue than what's being talked about in terms of this this gender thing. You know, they got cisgenders, and I can't even tell you all of the different genders that they got. But they have all of these different characterizations, and this all got weaved into the women's movement so that to fight the women's movement battle, you had to simultaneously endorse fighting the sexuality battle. Well, I can understand some of the similar struggles. I, that I can understand. Um, maybe that's why it. It's like okay, we we fight similar things, um, although it's not exact. But so I can understand them trying to you know put that all compartment compartment comp, 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 I can't even say the word. Put it in the same compartment right, and right. saying, "Oh, let's fight it." And so, what it is is it, it's it's almost like to me how the women's movement relates to the African American civil rights movement <clears throat> and the movement for African uh, 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 racial equality. Right. You know, in okay. this country, right? Those things, you know, connect to me for for this reason. We've been fighting the fight for racial equality since 1492. Mm -hmm. When Christopher Colon led some African, you know, West Coast African uh, uh, navigators right. all the way to the, you know, Hispaniola in, in North America went, went, or Central America, you know, since that time, we have been fighting this issue of racial equality. Now, Mr. Hay, just a question. I'm sorry. I, I don't mean to bother you. But was there any point 
in U.S. history or any history where blacks and people of different color was um, equal. It was there any point? Any yes. Point? <clears throat> yeah, I figure it was right. I, I mean, if, if you if you go back and you look at the Minoan civilizations. Uh, you look at the uh, the Ionians. You look at the even the uh, early Roman, you mm -hmm. know, civilizations. What you see are are African people that are peppered throughout those um, historical records of those civilizations. Mm -hmm. You see statues, you know, of African people. You see paintings of African yeah, people. Yeah, that's correct. Yeah. You know, uh, you see people in romantic, you know, postures, you know, with mm -hmm. you know with each other. And I mean, they they were just a part of the same schism. It wasn't like a unusual thing. Right. This is just what they did. In fact, Diodorus of Sicily, one of the great Roman philosophers, Greek philosophers rather, uh, he referred to the e Ethiopian in this way. He said the Ethiopians are the most beautiful, the most dignified, the, um, oh, he had another word, you know, that he, that he used to express what he felt, you know, the most intelligent uh, of all of the people on the earth. That's how he thought about Ethiopian people. So this issue of um, racial hierarchy something is something that emerged as the Roman Empire began to mm -hmm. metastasize. Uh, as and you, know, you know, when you get real big, you start right. to become something different than you originally were. Mm -hmm. Well, that's what happened with the Roman Empire. You know, they were they were they were a great empire when it was just Romulus and Remus. You know, running around you know uh, some area area called Roma. You know, in in, in Italy. But when they started spreading all the way out to to Asia and to West Africa, it became a different enterprise, right? And so things came into the queue that weren't in the queue, you know, before. But my point in, in saying that is the, the civil rights movement and the movement for the respect of the, of the humanity, equal humanity of all people, that has been a characteristic of African people's struggle in the Americas for every moment that we've been here. But women weren't engaged in that struggle. Women should have been engaged in that struggle, mm. but they weren't engaged in that struggle. Wow. And so the women's rights movement essentially evolved around the work of the African liberation movement. As the African liberation movement became more bold in uh, its advocacy, you know, with protests, you know, with uh, uh, developing self-help organizations, you know, doing a number of things to create a, a path forward for African people, the women's movement hitched a ride on the African uh, civil rights movement and used, used the, the context of the African civil rights movement to create the, 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 the fuel, you know, to, 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 to uh, uh, underwrite the women's movement, you know, in this country. Mm -hmm. That really needs to be said, right? But, but what also needs to be said on a side note that I'm just trying to help us to tease that a little bit is that the sexuality movement, this movement for, you know, these alternate, you know, sex, se sexual identities and the whole range of paradigms that seem to revolve around, you know, these alternate sexual identities, that movement is a hitched a ride on the women's movement. So that the, the women's movement, when it moves forward, it's sort of like, this will sound stupid the way I'm going to say this, but it, it, it's almost like they're dragging the uh, sexuality, you know, movement with them as the women's movement, you know, move, moves along. Does that make sense the way I said that? Yeah, it does. It does. I, I hope so. It didn't sound like it made sense to me. But anyway, um, I, I wanted people to understand this context as we start looking at, you know, the, the women's movement in this country. I, I feel that, as I've said before, the women's movement is, is oddly framed in this country because we talk about it as if we're talking about something that we have to add into a continuum. Now, you all might not know this because you, 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 you're not historians, you're not researchers, but I think you'd probably buy it if I told you that 51% of all of the people in the United States are women. I believe that. You all believe that, right? Yeah, I believe that. So if you believe that, then that means that 51% of the history of the United States is the history of women. Uh, I, don't, uh, I don't. You don't buy that? Not necessarily, but could be. Could be. Well, I'm not saying what's recorded. I'm just saying what should be. 
Yeah, yeah. If you were if you were developing a story or a treatise to discuss the history of American people, right? So, right. I got you. How could you do that and not have half of the story be be involved with female, you know, at, women, at least, American people? You could so. have a particular group of people, and these particular this particular group of people did not. Let's just say, advance or do anything to uh, move forward. Things I'm not saying that that's what happened with with females, but I'm just uh, hypothetically, it could be in this particular way. This well, matter. women were suppressed. They were suppressed. Yes, in this yeah. country. Yeah. It, in fact, and, it was the system of life in this country to suppress women. That was yeah. that was the deal. Yes. Right? So, uh, so, but my point is that. If we're talking about understanding our history, if the purpose of having a Women's History Month is to create a period of time that we actually focus on the history of women yes. in the evolution of the development of the United States, mm -hmm. that that's what we use this period for, then we should also recognize that if you're only getting 5 or 10% of your historical studies involving uh, the role of women and what women did in that story, you're missing 40 or 50% of the story. The story has to be f virtually 50 50 men and women in that story. I, at least I, I, re makes, I respect that, Mr. Right, that makes let me, it balanced. Let, right. me, let me pose this question. I, I, this is it's going a little uh, in another area, but I'd like to pose this. Mm -hmm. Mr. Hare, I was watching a news program the other day and um, they stipulated that 67% of women went to college. Uh -huh. And men, if you look at it, that means 33% of men were, you know what I'm saying? That's the comparison of male to female, 67 to 33. I don't think that's true, but that's okay. Well, well that's what it was, it was said in the news. I, I watched I, I know, it. I know, but you know, if it was, it was, it, it, it Depends on what news story you news outlet you were listening to. You I don't been, know which one. You might have been listening to Fox News, but but we'll we'll talk about that separately. But well, let's get to your point. With that being said, um, and I've been kind of looking around, or not just looking around, but women in general, um, not just in in the schooling aspect, but in the work aspect, in the way that uh, things are going right now men being more men being incarcerated especially more black men mm -hmm. if you uh utilize if you go with that uh, analogy um it's like women are surpassing men even in the even in the work area um i i'd, I'd like to you know just say that and add that because um you know there's men that are you know they're looking and, and speaking on this particular subject they're taking over men's jobs, and um, you know, nothing wrong with that. You know, I I I don't well, want to be. Well, I just wanted to, you know the, the the word you use carry some some uh, suggestion about what's inside your maybe, head. Maybe maybe I should so, I, I should so uh, you say about, it in a different you, you way. You talked about men's jobs. There's no such thing as men's right, jobs. Right. These are just but, jobs. But these, a woman got the job. Yeah, okay. And the and the women are the women are <laughs> getting are getting these thing. jobs, which is which is really a great thing, but, and it's bringing parity but, to but, the workforce. But this is great because it, it it brings out you know the currents that are going through the minds of people, and you know, how these currents sort of crash into each other. Mm -hmm. You know, so on the one hand, especially if you're somebody who was raised by, you know, a, a, a single mother and you had sisters, didn't have any brothers, you have an orientation towards a woman's point of view about things, right? Yeah. And so, you know, I put the toilet seat down, you know, when I'm in the giant, you know, because that's the way I was raised right. and so on, right? So the, 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 the ideation that we have around women's rights, it, it, it's, it, it is shaping itself around the, pre, the, the preset biases and preset beliefs, you know, that are enrolled in us because of how we have been raised. But what we have to do is we have to ask ourselves, why are we trapping ourselves in patterns of thought that somebody just created and imposed on us that really don't have any uh, 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 tangible reality in existence. Now, when I say no tangible, I want to I want to preface that with this: if a woman gets pregnant, my belief is, whatever man she was rolling with at the time that she got pregnant, that's the father of the baby. 
I, I, I ain't wasting time with all of that, you know, lab tests and all that stuff. Mm -mm, I ain't trying to hear that. If you were with her, she got pregnant, that's your child, she's your baby's mama, right? <laughs> Period. And since she's your baby's mom, your ba since, since that's the, you're the baby's daddy, you owe half of that child's existence. You owe it. Every dollar you get, a half of that dollar has to go to take care of your child. No if ands, or buts, no Mr. whining about it. You Mr. just Hare, gotta do it. Do you mm -hmm. do you watch Maury? No, I don't even know what Maury means. You don't know you don't know about Maury. Nope. All right. I said well, you got a call or call okay, I'll let I'll let you answer the call. <laughs> oh, it's gonna be a long thing on Maury. Not, no. <laughs> Hello. Hello. All right. So uh I was gonna talk a little bit about Sojourner Truth, you know, because uh she was a person who is talked about as an icon in the women's rights movement, but she's not talked about as an icon in the African liberation movement. Mm. But when you study her history, she has much more history that involves African liberation than she has in you know women's uh, uh, women's rights. So there is something weird, you know, about the history that 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 is being taught here. Uh, I, I, I cut you off, Willie. You got a caller? We do. Yep. Yeah, okay. Let me grab that call real quick. Hi, caller. Are you there? I'm here. How are you? Hey. Morning? All right. How are you there? doing? All right. This is uh, Kaki. I know. Am Philly. I am I on your street? I'm trying to help. I'm trying to help me understand as well as <laughs> helping right, everybody so else understand. Let's do some point of information, okay. Norman. You know, I'm really glad more women are getting into the STEM field because you're proving it because your math is off. But uh, <laughs> well, thank you. So thank you. Kaki, so, okay? so you know, I, I haven't fact check you, but you're saying 67% of women go to college. I don't know, and we can, maybe, Willie, you can do a good... Uh, I'm certain Google that that's not true, but, that but doesn't mean, we just let that Norm roll. <laughs> 60% of men go to college. That, in other words, it's just because, they, in other words, 33% or 34, you know, 33% of women don't go to college, but for men, I don't know if it's more than men. What I do want to talk in, and Norman, I'm going to storm you a little bit, Norman, okay. Norman <laughs> <laughs> You know, I'm looking at two websites, one's um, leanin.org, and it talks about the pay gap. And it talks about black right. women are paid less than white men and white right. women. And on average, black women in the U.S. are paid 36% less than white right. men and 12% yep. less true. than white women. And then also, I'm going to show you, um, I mean, in general, there's a, in 2021, according to the uh, Census Department's most recent analysis, uh, full-time year-round white or working women, all women, earned 84% of what their male counterparts. Right. So, Norm, I love you to peace. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, Kat, you know, hey you know, Kat, I got to agree with you because I just saw um, some actresses, big-time actresses, and they were okay. complaining exactly what you just said, that even though they're big in their industry, they're top-notch in their industry, yeah. um, they make half of what I think something like this. she was saying half of what her white counterparts make, yeah. and then the men forget it. The they even the white women make less than the men do. So you you're right on with that. Yeah. So you're, you're right on. You know, we live by the numbers and we die by the numbers. <laughs> I, <laughs> and I I think I went down pretty hard, Kaki. <laughs> so, <laughs> but, but 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 I. I, I want to say thank you, and um, man, I don't know what it. Maybe I worded it wrong, or but it was something dealing with uh, that percentage, and uh, maybe I'm, I'm not maybe I'm way off, and we'll I'll let you guys run with it. I, 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 it's, it's, I'll text Willie what percentage of men yeah. go to college, and you know I just want to say, uh, Mr. Hare, the way you intro this is like, why are women expected to do the shop and the cleaning? I just don't get it. Why would you go? I mean, seriously, when you go to a PTO or a home and school association meeting, it's almost always women. Right. And that's, you know, like yep. where I'm living now, I met a man and he's saying that he would always go with his wife to the home and school association yep. meetings. And he'd always tell her, sit on your hands. And he told her to sit on her hands because she'd be the first one to pop up and raise her hand to volunteer for this and volunteer for that. And that's great. But it's like, you know, if you want to give an image to your children, I was very active in my son's school because I wanted him to see that serving your community. 
I really wanted him to see that going to school is a big deal yep. and valuing education. So if my mom and my dad show up, that means this has got to be important, you know. So, but it's like, why are women? You know, it's a it's a thirty six hour day. It's like, why? You know, what? <laughs> for instance, with caregiving. I mean, my family is an right. exception. My brother is is amazing when it came to caring for my mom and dad and all that stuff and my husband and all that. But you know, it's usually. It's the daughter that does it, you know, when mm-hmm. you have yep. a frail family member. So, you true. know, and it's women. And if you even look at people who are um, PCAs or uh, certified nursing assistants, all that, why is it almost always overwhelmingly women? You know, yep, why right. are we the caregivers? And not for nothing, but you all do have stronger backs than us. So get off your back. That's what the feminist movement, the, the, the third and fourth phase of the feminist movement, that's what that has been about. It's trying to tease that those ingrained, uh, uh, cat, it's like a caste system that we have, you know, in, yeah. in this society. Right? But don't they consider yeah. the women as the nurturers, though? Um, that's true. More so a nurturer but, and, but, you know, that's... All, all of our cultures say that. Mm-hmm. But, but we, it's wrong. Like, for instance, when we were caring for my parents, they both had Alzheimer's, and we had a baby monitor. Mm-hmm. And my husband had to be at work at 7 o'clock in the morning. He drove a trash truck to the city of Philadelphia for 36 years, and that ain't easy. But when we heard that monitor go up, you know, and I, you know, I'd start, get up. He goes, girl, I got this. Go to, back to sleep. I, you know, mm-hmm. he was that. And to me, that's a real man. Okay. Yep. I was a strong black man. He was a real man. Strong he black man. Up. I like that. That's <laughs> the truth. You know, it's the truth. He got it because he cared for his grands. And there's so much positive black culture because in black culture, for the most part, you don't do the nursing home. You know, that's just, you know, we take care of our own or y'all take, I'm not African-American, but y'all take care of your own. And that's, you know, and that's that's a great thing, and that's the way my husband was raised. And he, you know, when it came time to finding care for my parents, he, I, I didn't have to say, "Can I bring him home?" It's like, "Honey, I'm bringing him home," because I knew it was a given. We knew he knew the right thing to do. So, but you know, but not too many men are liberated like him, you know, or not enough. There are lots of wonderful, loving men, but you need more that are liberated who say, "I got this." Yep. You know, don't sweat it. You yep. know, I got yep. your back because you've always had my back. So uh, happy Women's History Month. And yep. uh, I don't know. I agree with you, Mr. Harry. You know, there's a lot more history that needs to be shed on the wonderful things because they say behind every great man is a great woman. And yep, I'd like to think vice versa or behind every great woman is another great woman or behind every great man is another great man and all that. So. Y'all stay blessed by the best, and thank you for shining a whole lot of light on us. Hey, right. Kaki, thank before you, you go, um, who name one uh, female that that motivates you or that you you want everybody to know about? Dolores Huerta. <laughs> <laughs> you know, she really was. You know, she. I. I, I one of my mentors was Cesar Chavez, the United Farm Workers, and also Dolores Huerta. I, I knew Cesar. Cesar. I didn't um, ever meet get to meet Dolores, but she was such a fighter and, you know, she'd bring her kids around. Sometimes we would even joke like, oh, Dolores, you know, she didn't know, she didn't always know where her kids were. I mean, or she did, she'd have them out with her, but she also knew she could rely on other people to take care of her kids. But Dolores Huerta, to me, you know, in terms of women's rights and, you know, and, and she was discriminated against because when mm. she, you know, she, I think she was actually, when she wanted to run again for being on the board, she was never considered as a candidate, I believe, I have to double check my facts, as being the president of the United Farmers. And, you know, it was always male. I mean, she was in the leadership and she was the co-founder. Not everybody knows, but she was a co-founder with Cesar Chavez, the United Farmers. So, wow. you know, she was a great labor leader. Great. I mean, she's still alive and giving speeches. I mean, she's awesome. amazing. So I'm going to tell you, you know, maybe... Uh, Dolores Huerta, she, she's my, Dolores um, Huerta. many women, but, you know, I would say Sojourner Truth and um, Dolores Huerta and, you know, so many women. But, you know, because um, I believe in the labor movement very, very strongly. And, you know, I, years ago I was a labor organizer. So that's my person of the day. All right. Outstanding. All right. Outstanding. And thanks. I like the way, you know, thanks, Willie, for that question. I really appreciate it. You're welcome. In fact, okay, I have I have, I have Dolores Huerta in my notes, so we'll talk about her a little awesome. bit Good. in the okay. second half of the awesome. program. Bye, guys. All right, thanks, Bye-bye. thanks Bye-bye. so much. So sure. listen, Bye-bye. we tried to set the plate for you, so we, we have a, a way of having a conversation about uh, the women's movement per se, so that when we talk about women's history, 
we definitely have to talk about the women's movement and the various permutations of that movement. So we're going to talk about that, but we're going to do it through the eyes of people that made up that movement. So if you all stick with us, we will see you on the other side of the break here at Living for the People at 91.3 FM WBNY. FM WBNY Mondays 6 p.m. for Mental Health Versus, where Carl Shallowhorn mashes up music and mental health in a way you've never heard before. Carl dives into topics such as trauma, depression, and anxiety with compelling guests and captivating music. Mental Health Versus, a show both entertaining and informative. Check out Mental Health Versus Mondays at 6 p.m. on 91.3 FM WBNY. To protect his home and family from disaster, Steve used courage, wisdom, and his camera phone. That should do it. Way to go, Steve! By simply taking digital pictures of his family's important documents, Steve can always have them stored safely online, no matter when disaster strikes. Learn other simple ways to protect your home and family before a natural disaster at ready.gov. That's ready.gov. A message from FEMA and the Ad Council. The sun's shining, birds are singing, and all feels right in the world. Until the season changes, and suddenly everything seems darker, less lively, and you lose your motivation to get out of bed. If you struggle with depression, you're not alone. In fact, one in five people experience some form of depression, and no matter the time of year, it may affect your behavioral or physical ability to live a happy life. At the American Psychiatric Association Foundation, we understand what you're going through, and we're here to help. Our vision is to build a mentally healthy nation for all, because we want you to live your best life and be your best you all year round. We work every day to eliminate stigma, combat mental illness and substance use disorders, and advance mental wellness. If you or someone you love needs help, you are not alone. Please visit mentallyhealthynation.org to learn more. Welcome back to Living for the People. This is L. Nathan here, your host. We're here with Willie H., who does the uh, live streaming of the program. Welcome back, Willie. Welcome, everybody, to Living for the People with L. Nathan here. Yeah, we have our in-studio audience of one, Norm McCarter. He's still here. How you doing, Norm? Still hanging in, Mr. Hare. Right. Still hanging in. All right. So we just wanted to give you an overview of what we're talking about in this uh, uh, women's uh well, I, I would think it's better to talk about it as a women's rights movement. We talk about it as a women's movement as one thing and the feminist movement as another thing. But I think we're really talking about uh, uh, women's rights. Uh, at uh, Let me just say for, in fact, I'm going to skip over that piece and go. Uh, uh, let me talk to you, talk a little bit about this conversation in the context of people that make up <laughs> iconic folks uh, that populated the women's uh, uh, movement in this country. Uh, I went to a text written by Megan Cook, uh, 16 women throughout history who famously fought for equality. This was in Insider Magazine. And the first one they mentioned was Sojourner Truth. Uh, she died at 86 years old. So this is a person who was born in uh, a, a time period, was um, uh, she, she was born a slave, right. and yet she was able to become uh, such a impressive person to have such a moment and such impact, uh, not just on women's rights, but on people's rights per se. And as you'll see in this discussion, she was probably more uh, involved in the fight for racial equality and racial justice than she was in women's equality and women's just, uh, 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 justice issues. But her brand in history seems to always be around her role in women's rights. Uh, I'm going to let you all try to figure out why that is, but I'm just going to give you a little bit of the, the, the history. Uh, I, and I talk about this in the context that in this uh, article of these 16 women that they uh, identified throughout history that fought for uh, equality, there's no mention of Harriet Tubman. Mm. How does Harriet Tubman not be an iconic person in the fight for women's equality? 
when Harriet Tubman personified the role of women in the American the American fight for freedom. She was the American fight for freedom. Right. Well, she may, did it with her feet, right. with her hands. Right. Right. But I think they they probably because of slavery, she tried to free slaves, and that's what they focus on. Okay, I'm, we're gonna that, the 21st century guy uh, Willie H said that, so we're gonna, we're gonna leave that right there. Well, that's why they probably didn't include her in that because. Okay, I'm I'm hearing yeah. your apologetic. Not to say she wasn't. She I, was part of that. I, 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 I'm not buying it, but I'm but I'm hearing okay. you. Okay, right. I'm, I'm hearing you. Okay, right. <laughs> and so uh, Angela Davis. Yeah, how Angela does, Davis. How does Angela Davis not become one of the iconic players in the uh, women's uh, movement in this country? Yeah, I love the Afro too. <laughs> You loved a lot about Angela Davis. I'm never gonna let you <laughs> stop playing. Quit playing. That's what the, I'm sure you did too, Mr. That's episode. what my daughter would always say. Quit playing. <laughs> and so, uh, but Sojourner Truth was an African American abolitionist mm -hmm. who dedicated her life to fighting and defending gender equality. Uh, uh, gender equality. And though she was born into slavery, she escaped uh, to freedom with her young daughter when she was 29 years old. She was partially descendant from a Dutch colonist and originally named Isabella Bomfrey. Uh, she became the first black woman to win a custody court battle against a white man that enabled her to recover wow. her son from slavery. That's huge. Because when she slave, when she, she when she escaped slavery with her daughter, mm -hmm. she had a son. She couldn't get him along with her daughter, so she she ran with her daughter. Then she actually went through a New York state court mm -hmm. and got a New York state court to issue a writ of habeas corpus. Bring the wow. body to me. Wow. Habeas corpus is, is a powerful, you know, uh, 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 pr provision in our Constitution. You have to produce the body. Right? right. And so she was able to get a writ from a court in New York state to make uh, the state. I forgot what state she was. She was in. Um uh, don't come to my mind right now uh, what, what state she was in, but uh, she was able to get a writ from New York State to tell the people in that state that she was her, her, her son was in. You have to produce the body, and you had to bring the body to New York State. They kill her the son. Is. No, they didn't kill him. Oh, thank God. They produced the boy. Oh, awesome. Brought him to New York State. Nice. Once he was in New York State, then she said, "In New York State, they don't have slavery. He's free." He's so free. he's free. Yeah. Awesome. So he was he was enslaved. Mm. They used the law in a free Smart state. Smart woman. Smart to produce woman. A, to produce the body of her son who was in a slave state, had the slave state pay for bringing his son up here to New York State. And then once he crossed the border to New York State, he raised hands, excuse me, excuse me. This is New York State. They don't oh, have slavery here. I'm, I'm not your slave anymore. Right. Do, do you have the year, Mr. Harris? I, I don't have the year, oh, okay. but... Um, to me, that was a tremendous that, thing. Very right? much so, yeah. That and was the, huge because she was at lawyer qualities. She yep. had po political, um, you know, I guess smarts. So that Ohio was Ohio was the state that she was Ohio. in. It came Ohio. back to me, right? You know, Ohio has a, a lot of history, like it's like the Alabama of the North and whatnot. You know, don't don't get fooled by the fact that Ohio was a northern city. Yeah, I was about to say. Yeah, I, yeah, I thought it was. They're like the Alabama of the North. You yeah. know, don't, don't 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 get get it get it twisted with them. And uh, Ohio players came from there too. <laughs> uh, yeah. In fact, you saw them at the Pine Grill. Right? No, you you were too no, young for that. No, you no, I that. saw them last night at um uh, one of the shows. At the Ohio players? Ohio players. Um, yeah. They were showing, you know. Well, that's a different story. But we used, yeah. we used to roll. We used to hang out with them. Right? You did, Mr. Hill? Yeah. I mean, they, they when, oh, when, when sure. the last the, 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 the last show was done at, you know, 2, 2, 15 in the morning, you know, they, they're going out, you know, to the uh, uh, Holland House, you know, wow. and places like that to, to get something to eat. We'd be out there, too, and whatnot. And, and it was just... Buffalo was a different place, you know. Wow. Those oh, that's that, right, because Rick James, they played with Rick James. Right, right. Those that don't know, Mr. Hare is a true renaissance guy. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate that honor. <laughs> so uh, uh, wow. Soldier in the Truth was, a, was fearless in her fight for racial equality. She recruited black troops for the Union Army and attempted to secure land grants for former enslaved persons after abolition. 
In the ni- in 1860s, she often rode in streetcars in Washington, D.C. This was before Rosa Parks, before I forget the lady's name, who uh, six months before Rosa Parks also rode on the bus, you know, uh, in the front rather than the back seat. Mm-hmm. Uh, long before all of that. This in the 1700s. 1700s. In the wow. 1700s. 1700s. Okay? Wow. Right. Wow. So I'm sorry, that's wrong. The 1860s. Oh, 1860s. Okay. Yeah. She often rode on streetcars in Washington, D.C. to promote desegregation and publicly protest racism. Her efforts were acknowledged by President Abraham Lincoln, who invited her to the White House in 1864. Yeah, I had a picture of that. Remember, she slavery was not that. abolished until 1866. In 1864, Sojourner Truth got to eat at a table in the White House and not in, in, in the steward section, in the back of the White House. She got to eat up in the front. I don't know what they did with the plates. You know, they, they may not have kept the plates. <laughs> well, you know, I, that, wow. That's another story about me and, and the Swiss chalet and plates. That's another story altogether. But we won't talk about that right now. But uh, it's interesting that the abolitionists were centered on abolishing slavery versus racial equality. She is noted for her support for gender equality, yet she was profoundly engaged in the struggle for civil rights. So, you know, I, 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 I just want us to understand this, this context of Sojourner Truth and how she gets, you know, uh, uh, scooped into history, but in a context that doesn't place her in much relationship with the history of the struggle of African people. It places her uh, in a place in the struggle for women's liberation and women's liberation, not just from contractual things like how much you get paid and whether you can vote, whether you can be on a jury and that sort of stuff, but also to free women from the roles that have been assigned to women in this society. And this has to be oppressive. You know, I mean, if you're if you're not a woman, you don't feel this coming at you. You just see it, but you don't feel it coming at you. If you're a woman, it's got to be a lot of press on you. You know, as I'm getting out of high school, you know, do I pick a husband right now or do I do I, I go to university and pick one at the university? Yeah, Because yeah. my life is going to be having a husband who's got a strong economic foundation right. and me having the ability to raise a household, right. you know, around my kids and, you know, our, our, our social caste and so on. Right. Um, you know, that that has to be. A stifling, you know, for, uh, for women, because you got all of these possibilities. I think about this lady named Sally Ride. I think I have her in my notes too. Uh, she was one of those uh, uh, astronauts in the early, er, the early astronaut program. Like there were thirty-five people mm-hmm. in the first crew of folks that were being trained to be astronauts, and you know, for her, even though she didn't seem to feel terribly oppressed, but you could tell from just reading her story that she had the vision and she had the drive to become somebody who could ride a bullet, you know, all the way to the, to the moon and back, you know, and to steer, you know, a, a, a one of these ships. She had that ability, but to get to use that ability, to be able to uh, explore and develop that ability was constrained by the fact, merely the fact that she was a woman. What, but, what is her name again? Sally what? Sally Ride, R-I-D-E. I think I got her in, in, in our notes. So the, I think in the notes that I sent you, uh, Norm, okay. it should be, it, it, it'll be in those notes. So the next one I want to talk about is Susan B. Anthony. She was born in 1820. She died in 1906. So she, another one that lived 86 years. She was a powerful social activist. Uh, she was an icon in the early civil uh, women's rights movement. She was raised by a family of Quakers. She grew up handing out anti-slavery petitions and as a, as a child and as a teenager. She was a lifelong supporter of gender and racial equality. Uh, she was a close friend of Elizabeth Stanton. Uh, and, and they actually moved, uh, 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 moved the movement along uh, into the American uh, Women's Suffrage Association when the 15th Amendment was, was ratified in 1860, or excuse me, 1870. Now, the, the, the thing that was interesting is uh, they, 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 they were upset with the passage of the 15th Amendment in 1870 because they were fighting for women's suffrage. Women's suffrage meant that, you know, we're half of the population. You know, we talked about that earlier. We're half of the people. 
we, our half should be able to vote too. But no, not in the United States. You know, your, your half couldn't vote. Black men got the right to vote in 1870. Women didn't get the right to vote until 1919. Wow. So I just want you to just picture that in your mind. If you're a Caucasian woman, you're a white woman, and you've lived in a country that almost by religion oppresses black people, mm. exploits back b black people, that, 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 that uh, uh, suppresses you know, black people as, as religion. That's what they do you know, for, for a living. You live in that kind of a country, and the black man, who's basically a cow, you know, who's supposed to have an oxen's harness on him to be, you know, pulling uh, 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 some big stone over, over a gristmill to, you know, to make grain or whatever it is they, they had slave people and slave people do. She, this is the world that she grew up in, and that person got to vote before she got to vote, and she had the ability to be the Queen of England. But she couldn't vote. It's it's kind of an odd circumstance, which brings me to this question. Wh which grouping of people would you say has advanced more, um, you know, coming back from, from obscurity? White women. I, I, I'm, not, I'm, I'm talking <laughs> about women in general or, uh, or, or uh, black men. If white, you, white women in, in general yeah. well, uh, I, have been I the agree. complete beneficiaries of the civil rights movement. I, Take the label off of it. So don't make it Puerto Rican rights or right. you know gender rights or, or this. Just talk about civil rights. I, I respect that. Mm -hmm. But if you intermingle women of color into that mix, mm -hmm. would they, I mean, would it, I know white women have, have advanced far more, but when you, when you uh, couple women in general in comparison with with black men right how 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 would that look women in general still make no I, I i'm not certain about this i'm not certain about this i think that women in general make 88% of the money that black men in general make i think that black men make more money as a caste than white women as a caste, okay? Black men still are... are I think that I think that they're a little bit above... Ele elevated right, in that, yeah. Right. Now, Mr. Mr. Hare? Oh, 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 hold on, I gotta... Hold on now. Yeah. Are, are, you, are you telling me that black men make more money than white women? Are you saying I, that? I, I gotta, I gotta be, be look at that again. Uh, you better check your stats on that, my man. <laughs> You better check your stats because what you just said, even with the rights, with the women's right, the white women have progressed, which means they got they minority businesses. They can they they into that minority businesses. They into women businesses. Um, they're able to to move and groove, and although they don't make more money than white men, I'm I can't believe that black men make more money. Than white women. Hold on one I, second. I'm, I'm about that. to pull it up right now. It's hard for me to believe that, sir. Yeah, it's hard for me to believe it, too. Well, it almost goes back to the point I was trying to make earlier. Uh, you yeah, know, I know e what you were trying to even say. With the, yeah. Even with the schooling, but just similar. But I, I realized I was wrong in the way I worded it. But right. There's a there's a lot to it, you know. Yeah. I, and I even believe now, even though bl black men probably make more money than um, black women, but as far as you, probably the percentage in jobs but you know what? that they get, I almost feel like black women what? probably get more jobs than it's, black that, That's women. another point I was trying to, uh, the way that it looks now is the way that women have progressed. They, I believe that they progressed, especially black women, over, over, the, over the black man. And the black man right now takes a, a back seat to black women. And, and the reason we believe that, Mr. Hare, is because when we look at our community with the black women, we see, seem like black women have more jobs or more, um, I don't know. The propensity to gain yeah, so higher, just, just, higher jobs. Just looking at this in 2010. Okay. 
uh, for white men, okay. their median income, median is not average. Median is just like right. the, the point where half of the, the, the salaries they looked at were above a point right, and, right. and the other half were, were, were below. Okay. For uh, white men, it was $60,388 per year. Okay. For white women, it was $46,513 per year. Okay. For... Um, for black men, it was forty-two thousand. Black men were about four thousand a year lower. Like, I see, I black, figured that than, than white women. It, it was hard for me to believe that. Yeah, black men make more money because you've been living women. in this country for a long time, right? Well, it, you see it, you hear it, you see it. You know, my maybe just my surroundings or my environment, but for me, I see black women tend to, especially these days, tend to seem to make have they have more of the jobs, they make more of the money, uh, and. Not well, to say well, that black men don't make more. Well, more. just just on the issue of black women yeah. making the money. Yeah. The, the the statistics don't point to what you just said. Okay. The statistics say that black women only make thirty six thousand seven hundred and thirty five dollars per Ooh. year. Oh, okay. They are way way below, you Boy. know, uh, on the 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 income scale. So they may be working more, but they're not making. But money. they're not okay. making more money. Okay. Like Khaki was saying. Right. Like Khaki was saying. Okay. So 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 <laughs> this then becomes you know. Part of the conundrum. Right. You have people in this country who, who represent the women's movement who were only focused, or at least they appear to only be focused, on those transactional things that make up citizenship. So, you know, your, your right to vote, your right to be on a jury, you know, your right to, to representation, um, you know, your right to equal pay, you know, transactional kind of things. But they weren't focused on the role responsibilities, right? So women were still expected, you know, to be the ones you get married. The women take care of the household. The men go to work. That right. was still, you know, the cultural framework uh, of the country. The, the women's feminism movement is different than the women's rights movement. Mm -hmm. The feminism movement was trying to release women from the oppression of having to live only in the caste that we they we've assigned for women in in this country right that all you can be is the housewife all right. you can be is you know you take care of the business of the home and then if there's nothing to do you just watch soap operas you know all day or whatever it is that normally goes on for people that aren't working and so on um that 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 part of the struggle is different and that's a part of the struggle that we still have going on today and so you understand what this means for men it means that in, in order for you to, to, to cure historical reality, you have to put a lot of attention on that historical reality. If people have been discriminated against one class of people by another class of people, and they've been doing this for hundreds of years, you're not going to correct that by just passing a law and wagging your fingers at people and say, stop doing that. That's, that's wrong. You have to persist. You have to do things to educate people, to help people grow into a different consciousness. Well, that means if, if what you're hearing a lot of in school is, well, honey, you could do math. Well, honey, you could be a STEM, you know, a, a, a scientist. Oh, honey, you can do this, you can do that. And to the boys in that same class, well, you know, you, you guys already got things going your way. You don't need any more help from me. Right. <laughs> and, right. and so the boys are kind of ignored, you know, or shunted down or not paid attention to. Yeah. The consequence of that is you have more... <laughs> Females, black and white and brown, females going to college by a significant amount than you have black males, brown males, Asian males, maybe not Asian males, but definitely uh, uh, black and brown males going to college. That number compared to women is significantly off. And so why does that exist? Because all of the attention has been on trying to cure the caste, you know, uh, assignment of, of women, you know, having been born into the caste of being a woman and all that that has, you know, produced in their lives, the time and the, the effort to cure that meant that that's all you were talking about. You didn't talk to, 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 to black boys. You can be the greatest thing you want to be. No, you're a man. You already can be anything you want to be. That's simply not true. But that is what is presented you know, for, for black men. Go ahead. I, I just want to say, uh, Mr. Hare, thank you for 
kind of expounding on that a little bit and because I know my synopsis earlier was a little off, but it was it was kind of in that range of, of what you just spoke on. I know you were just trying to rescue the conversation so we wouldn't all get con- <laughs> convicted of anti-feminism and whatnot. But I just hope that we understand this this context, right? So, you know, there's a lot more. I, I didn't go that there was like 14 or 15 other people I wanted to, to, to talk about um, that that make up the feminist movement. Um, I think um, Kat was talking about uh, Dolores Huerta. She was a civil rights activist for. Um, uh, she worked on the w- w- with the farmers and agricultural workers like Cesar, Cesar Chavez. Uh, she's a Mexican American labor leader and activist, uh, founder of the United Farm Workers of America. Played a crucial role in the organization Delano uh, uh, Grape Strike uh, Strike in 1965. She still fights for workers' rights, immigrants' rights, and women's rights. Uh, notably, she, in the present-day Latinx community, she is also known as the originator of the, the Cise Puede uh, chant, which means, yes, it is possible. I didn't know that, but I thought I'd get that out there for you. So listen, okay. we're at the end of the show. We're going to do a little bit more of this discussion. I just Yeah, want let's to, talk some more about this. Yeah, I just want us to understand that the women's movement it consists of two core elements. One element is the transactional, the rights element of it. The, 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 the you should not do this. If you pay this person twelve dollars an hour, you got to pay this woman twelve dollars right, an hour for, right, for doing the same job. Right. So that's one side of the movement. Yes, sir. The other side of the movement is that women should not be limited to just living inside their house with the white picket fence right. and the dog. Uh, absolutely. They, they have the right to learn as much as they want to learn, right. to grow into whatever they want to grow into, to work in whatever you know field they want to work in. That should just be normalized right. for women. But I want us to understand there are consequences to that normalization. If you make your conversation so much about what you have to do for women, you wind up not having that conversation with men you have men thinking that they're somehow, you know, the oddball. There's something wrong with, with you know, with, with us as men. And, and we actually end up suppressing, you know, the orientation of men, the, the desire in men, the drive in men, you know, to push themselves forward. Mr. Hare, it, it, um, I, I, I'm for women's rights and every aspect behind the women. But it does, in certain ways, marginalize, especially the black man and the black man without education in general and um it's it's a it's a it's a double-edged sword All right so we have to think about you know as we go along in the course of this month we have to think about ways that we can engage our people so we can cure that once you know what's wrong to to to, to end something that's wrong is not to, to to reinstate something that was wrong before to end something that's wrong is to find a new way to do what you do that doesn't cause that injury you know, going forward. Yes, That's sir. what we got to get done. Thank you all for listening to us and supporting us. We look forward to talking to you all on Wednesday here at Living for the People at 91.3 FM, WBNY. We'll see you all then.